Hello, I'm Stanley Chappell. You may have seen recently that there has been some drama in the Cuban community surrounding the WCA board's decision on Wang Yihung's 2x2 world record average of 0.78. With that said, we're going to read a leaked email from WRC leader Carter Kukala on behalf of the WRC to some WCA staff members. Enjoy! Hello all, this email is on behalf of WRC. We are very happy to provide some transparency to this whole process, our role, and why it took almost 100 days for a statement to be made. This entire process has been incredibly frustrating for WRC, not only due to the situation itself, but also because of how the board handled their communication with us. It is only fair the WCA staff are made aware of the issues we were dealing with. To provide a bit of a timeline, we initially reached out to the board on July 2nd to discuss this issue with them. Note that at this point, the board was still the Board of Appeal for WRC. Ultimately, we thought that due to the nature of the case, it would be best to come to an agreement with the board prior to making a public announcement, which would certainly need to be made at some point. Initially, WRC voted to penalize the 0.78 for many of the reasons that have already been discussed in a multitude of places, not the least of which was that this would be allowing a world record to stand which we recognize was not achieved in accordance with the regulations. Due to how this situation played out, we now have a situation where the world record was broken by gaining a significant advantage that is not in accordance with the regulations, while any competitor who does the exact same thing tomorrow will not have their result count, despite no regulations actually being changed. We did not want this, and we made this clear. As I found out in my meeting with them at NAC, the board did not agree with us, stating that they did not support using frame-by-frame -frame analysis of this result because of the previously established practice of only watching the video at full speed. However, this is not something that is encoded in the regulations and is not binding. This situation is unprecedented and not something that the initial decision could have possibly taken into account. The original decision was made for accidental violations that did not provide a significant advantage to the competitor compared to a perfectly legal stop. This case is fundamentally different, and not penalizing this opens the door for competitors to continue to do this, both intentionally and to a larger extent. See the below snippet of an email we sent to the board. This is not a precedent that is listed in the regulations and required that we follow in every single case, it is not binding and has no formal standing within the WCA's regulations framework. In no legal system would precedence for an entirely different situation be applicable for a new case that was never seen before. See this link for how precedence can be augmented. This is cut off a little bit, sorry. Uh, in legal systems where precedents are binding. End snippet. Ultimately, despite all of the reasons to penalize the average that we provided, the board decided that their opinion was right and completely disregarded WRC's opinion that analyzing this result in any way does not go against the previous decision. They were concerned that penalizing this would make it seem like the WCA is picking and choosing which solves to penalize, and decided that this was more important than not allowing a record to stand that we admit was not achieved legitimately. After considering the board's opinion on the situation, the WRC decided to vote once more on whether or not to penalize the 0.78. I will let the result of that vote speak for itself. Tally. Question number one. Should the WRC retroactively penalize Wang Yihong's 2x2 world record, regardless of the board's stance on the matter? Yes, 12. No, 0. Abstain, 1. We shared this with the board and told them that we were going to penalize the average. In response, the board clarified that their email was not advice, but in fact was them making a decision in accordance with section 3.1 of the bylaws. The board claimed that making decisions like these were the responsibility of the board, which makes no sense as making decisions on incidents is exactly what WRC is intended to do as per the WCA regulations committee motion, point 1.5. Note also point 1.6, which gives WRC the right to decision-making on the interpretation of the regulations if any unforeseen, uncovered, or unresolved incident happens during WCA competitions. The board disregarding the opinion of the individuals equipped to handle these incidents and making this decision themselves is completely unacceptable and is an extreme overstepping of the board's power. 
Additionally, by making a, this decision in this case, they are contradicting a precedent that they set themselves. In the board's handling of the appeal from Nanaimo back to school 2022, they decided that frame-by-frame -frame analysis could be used to the competitor's advantage, which demonstrates that deviating from the established practice can happen. They just did not want to do it in this particular scenario. This is the same scenario we were in before the appeals committee was formed. The board looks at an incident, does not consider the opinions and expertise of the people that make these types of decisions every day, and alters the WRC decision, resulting in WRC having to deal with the fallout and consider that decision for the future. By making this decision themselves, the board has completely disregarded the amazing appeal system that they created. Note that there is now no chance for anyone to appeal this decision, and the appeals process has been bypassed entirely. The board initially wanted us to make the frame-by-frame -frame statement without any mention of the 0.78, and they wanted it to just be swept under the rug. Of course, that is not a good way to handle this communication, which is why we asked them to make that statement themselves, as we were not going to make a statement that we very strongly oppose. Frankly, we cannot fathom how the board thought that making a decision against the unanimous opinion of WRC members could possibly be a good idea. By making this decision themselves against what WRC has stated, they are showing that they do not have trust in the WRC to make these decisions. If the board cannot trust their committees in these scenarios, it is extremely difficult for us to have trust in the board.